Con Zero, written and edited by Aimee Kawakami, illustrated by Yoshika Hamataki, narrated by Tenkin Waters. Con Zero was written to remind the current generation of the true purpose of mankind. It is said that the universe is ever expanding, yet we can always look back on our family history from our father to our grandfather and on and on. It goes back infinitely and advances indefinitely from grandfather to son and so on. Much like the universe, human life and life in general are now advancing in a process that is infinite. All pasts are pervasive before now. A gene moves not only by scientific and material means, but also by human will and environmental changes. When you have such a strong desire to pass an exam, the power of will awakens the gene and a miracle happens. It is called San Rikikaji in Shingon Mikyo. Also, in certain instances of great need like a fire, people can perform feats like lifting heavy weights which they would not be able to lift normally, or people's hair could go instantly grey when they receive a large shock. All any human really has is one mind and one body. No matter how intelligent a person becomes, they have only one life. I cannot but think that when the mind overrules the body in such a way, it cannot be explained by science. It exists as a more wonderful thing. As much as civilization moves on, it can never overcome life or death. Therefore, life and death must be due to a very grand thing indeed. It is called life, and death is the last stop as far as any human life is concerned, regardless of what it tries. Life and death cannot be unravelled by science, and people must rely on other means to get spiritual peace. Therefore the world is filled with religion. Religious feeling has declined in Japan, by the youth in particular, and as such juvenile delinquency persists. There are even people who murder a person and don't feel any guilt. This is such a scary world for children to be born into. In addition, parents lose religious feelings too. In this way, it is not the fault of the child, and the parents are responsible. The meaning of having religion is to have a feeling of thankfulness, and to have a heart filled with mercy. This book should be able to help everybody, even just a small amount. I was born the youngest child of four brothers in Nishinomiya City in Hyogo, Japan, in 1940. Through my father, who was a police officer, I got a job as a security guard for a large company in Nishinomiya. Mother was a devout Buddhist nun and firm believer in the teachings of Master Kukai. I was born during the war at a time when bronchitis was prevalent and took the lives of many babies. When I was three, I myself contracted it. I had a terrible cough and fever which resulted in me losing consciousness. Whilst unconscious, I had visions of myself and my mother on a beautiful white cloud. That was a place called the Paradise of Buddhist Souls and there were many Buddhas there. At the back, I saw one Buddha who shined like a diamond. My mother and I approached the Buddha and joined hands with him in prayer. Then, after a while, I regained consciousness. Every night while I was unconscious, my mother walked ten kilometres from our house to pray to Nyarin Kanon Sama for me at Kapatiyama. With Nyarin Kanon Sama on my side, I started to recover, and on the twenty-first day my consciousness returned. I got the power of Takasama and was healed. It is only thanks to the grace for Takasama that I exist today. In Nyarin Kanon Sama on my side I started to recover, and on the twenty-first day my consciousness returned. I got the power of Buddha and was healed. It is only thanks to the grace of Buddha that I exist today. When I was in the first grade of primary school, I moved with my family to Ibasuki in Kagoshiba Prefecture. My mother opened a temple there, and we rented a spare room attached to it. One day, when I got home, I'm home. Ah! Help me! Ah! Yo! Wait!
The thirty-year-old son of the landlord was holding a washing pole and acting threateningly. He was troubled following his time fighting in the war and rarely left his house. My intuition told me that if I asked him, then he would give me the pole. So I asked him to hand it to me. The words came to me naturally. <laughs> wow. After that, whenever he acted violently, our neighbour would come to me as I was the only person who could calm him down. That's when I started to wonder about if I had any mystical power. One day, when I was in third grade, on the way home from primary school. Hey! <laughs> we get music. Some children were tormenting a grasshopper. Something about the grasshopper made me feel it was more than just a normal grasshopper. Hey, what do you want? I will give you this if I can have that grasshopper. This person wants the grasshopper for 10 yen. Weirdo, let's get out of here. A purple wing. Indeed, it wasn't just a normal grasshopper with its purple wing. Stay safe and don't let other people capture you. The grasshopper returned my help later on. When I was in fourth grade, my father passed away. For 49 days after he died, my father appeared at my bedside every night. Father. Please take care of the family. From that day on, I completely believed that there are spirits in this world. During my first year of junior high school. I'm home. What's the matter? Your older sister has a fever of 40 degrees. If she does not start to improve, then the doctor says she may not make it through the night. Is she really bad? I hastily went to see my sister, who lived in the neighbourhood. Sister! I got changed into my robes and sat down at my family altar, chanting the Hanya Shingyo. Then, Kobodeshi Sama appeared in front of me. He told me to change the way I held my fingers when I prayed. I realised immediately that it was a sign from Buddha and he showed me how to pray for her in the correct way. I immediately began to pray for her in this way. While I prayed, I heard the gushing sound of a waterfall. Shortly after, That's enough! I heard the words of Kobodeshi Sama. I stopped praying for her and immediately returned home. I'm home. How was your sister? I think she will be home in half an hour. I really don't think that's going to happen. Thirty minutes later. Sister! Are you okay now? After I left, she felt like she needed the toilet. After going to the toilet, she purged her insides and her temperature came down. She got well again after that. From then on, I was convinced of the power of Buddha in this world. I was only a junior high school student, but I was always thinking about what approach I should take to Buddhism. I decided to go to the sea every Sunday during my summer holiday. I did this from three years from when I was in the first grade of junior high school, and I was in the sea from seven in the morning to seven in the evening to meditate. The sea helped me find my true relationship between myself and Buddha. At first many jellyfish would float near to me, and I was so cold after I got out of the sea because I had been soaking in the water for a long time so my body temperature dropped a lot. After a while I got used to being in the sea and I didn't think it was hard. So many things happened during three years of meditation. Help! One man who was fishing was bitten on the foot by a shark and almost dragged out to sea. I went to help him immediately. Are you okay? When I got there, the shark had already gone, and the man looked exhausted. Luckily, the man survived. On other occasions, sharks came and swam around me. 
that strangely they never made any effort to attack me at all. I think that this is also due to the grace of Buddha. I started to feel like these occasions were not of my own making, and I was at the will of someone or something else. It felt like I was back in my mother's womb when I was in the sea. And then later I felt like I was being held in the palm of Buddha's hands. Once when I got out of the sea I was not able to stand by myself. I had been fine when I was in the sea, but as soon as I got out I was unable to stand up. This made me realise that man cannot live without the support of Buddha's hand, and that all is supported and kept alive by his mercy. In other words, I certainly believed that all living things were given the gift of life by the grace and mercy of Buddha. In 1961 I turned 20 years old. I visited Tokyo for my work. It was the first time for me to visit the city, so everything was unusual to me. When I was crossing the road, I walked slowly like I always had done in the countryside. The traffic lights turned to red while I was crossing the road. I was stuck in the middle of the road with cars all around me. Oh no! It was also the first time I had seen so much traffic. I seriously thought I was going to be hit by a car and die. <coughs> I froze as I didn't know what to do. Then I noticed that a grasshopper was in my path. The grasshopper looked like he was watching me and wanting to talk to me. And it said, Come with me. I followed the grasshopper. I started walking towards the grasshopper. And was guided through the traffic and arrived safely at the pavement. Oh, I made it. I didn't know where the grasshopper had gone. I started to look for it. When I found it, it had been hit by a car. I looked closely at it and saw that it had a purple wing. It was the one I saved back when I was in third grade of primary school. It helped me without forgetting how I helped it all those years ago. I clearly understood that an insect also has a soul. I believe that this was mercy of Buddha and I am still thankful for that. I was taken on as a disciple of Mr. Teromoto, who was the head priest of Kosanji in Hiroshima. I became a Buddhist priest in 1964. My mother was the head priest of Komyoji Temple in Ibasuki. I built Komyoji Temple branch in Makurazaki, and I became the head priest there. My wife Mushin and I had a child. Mushin became a priest and supported me, so I decided to go to Mount Koyasan for monastic practices. Entsuritsuji is the strictest dojo in Koyasan, and is where other famous priests, Nichiren and Shinran, were trained. I received a kanjo ceremony there in July 1965. Then I returned to Makurazaki and worked hard for people in general. However, I always felt something was lacking. The thing I felt was lacking was that we needed a place for bodhisattvas to be seen at any time when it was necessary. I did Kokozo Basatsu 100 Day Gyo in 1966. Then Kunami Daki in Makurazaki appeared, and Dainichi Kanon Sama was there. Makurazaki was a famous place for typhoons, so I thought I must build a temple there. I built Daikokuji four fifths of the way up Kunami Daki mountain in July 1967. For the next 10 years I performed pilgrimages where I visited 88 places in Shikoku, Sasaguri, Sangoku and so on and performed ascetic practices where I stayed in the mountains. In 1976 I came back to Makurazaki and made Danichi Kanon Basatsu Sama in the place where it was most affected by the typhoons. After that big typhoons do not hit the area very much for some reason. I thank the grace of Buddha for this. I became the head priest of the Kunamiyama Daikokuji temple in 1987. This Kunamiyama Daikokuji was really a mysterious temple. During work to dig into the soil for the main hall, we came across a very large boulder. We could not move this boulder. What should we do? I looked at the stone carefully. 
there I saw Dainichi no Rai-sama from Taizukai sitting on the stone. I realised he should be the principal idol of this temple. I made the boulder into a large statue of Dainichi no Rai-sama for all to see. When the Buddha statue was completed, it shone with a blinding golden light. The light flashed three times and could be seen as far away as the city centre. The people who lived in the city were surprised and wondered what the light could be. The light was called Kobiryoko, and it signified the spiritual power of Dainichi Sama protected everyone. The principal object of worship, the Honzen, appeared naturally. This is a phenomenon that is very rare in this world. In Kunamiyama Daikokuji, there are more than 100 Buddhas, and they have always been there. Dainichi Rai Sama from Taizukai appeared naturally. Dainichi Kanon Basatsu Sama, who is an incarnation of Dainichi Rai Sama, protects people from typhoons. Senju Kanon Sama saves human lives. Nyairin Kanon Sama takes away human worldly desires. Fudomyo Sama burns evil spirits in human beings. Hakuryo Kanon Sama grots human health and business prosperity, amongst many other wishes. Mizuko Jizu Basatsu Sama's mercy protects children and people. Amada Nyurai Sama is a Buddhist master of the Buddhist paradise. Ko Badaishi Sama protects the people of the world while still living. Kanamiyama Daikokuji is truly hallowed ground that Buddha lives for. So if we dedicate ourselves to Gyo, then our wishes will come true and we can achieve our goals. It may be hard to understand completely what I am saying, but if you come and worship at the temple, then you will understand easily. In Japan, I founded Nanayama Nyairin Kanon in Karutsu Saga Prefecture with my own wife Mushin Kawakami. There are also some branches of these temples in Kumamoto, Tokyo, Yokohama and Osaka. Abroad I have founded holy places in England, Canada, Korea and Italy. We do our best now so that the world can become a more peaceful place. As part of that goal I have introduced a dance of Japan into the world. I tell you why dance. This is because the human body is 70% water, yet water and blood which drift through the body whilst dancing is purified. If the water in a human is connected with the water of the natural world, then the water of the natural world cleanses the human water. Stress and anger pollute the water. When internal water is polluted, people get sick. In all parts of the world, a shortage of water causes various problems. We must strive to solve these problems somehow. We use dance as a cultural exchange to communicate with local people in Canada, Korea and also Japan. I will try to spread this cultural exchange in Italy, the United States, Australia, the Netherlands and many other countries. We must try our best with all the world's people so that the world becomes peaceful as soon as possible. Above Kongo Kai Denichi Rai Sama and Korpodashi Sama, which were created by Eime Sensei, appears a figure bathed in light created by Denichi Rai Sama. A miracle! I performed the founding of Daikokuji in Makarazaki Shi. Kagoshima in 1967. There was the stone which came out from the soil and showed Dainichirai Sama from Taizokai through it. I erected this as the principal image. Three times a brilliant light ran from the principal image. People of the town were surprised and in awe. Then I established Nairin Kanonan in Nanayama Mamura Saga during November 2002. When I looked over an outside field from my shelter, I always saw Kongo Kai Dainichi no Sama sitting down in the space, so I erected Kongo Kai Dainichi no Sama in this place on March the 9th, 2006. I took a photo on my phone to preserve the memory. As I was about to take the photo, a large, soft, warm bag came down from above Kongo Kai Dainichi no Sama. I was surprised, so I took a photo of it immediately. The bag was torn, and something very like a large spider appeared. The spider's leg became the source of the light, and a big face appeared. When I pressed the shutter on the mobile phone, and checked the photo, it came out exactly as I had seen it. Then I returned to Daikokuji and Makurazaki 
for a great Buddhist memorial service, and in each eye summer of the principal idol, said on the sixth day, The power in Nanayamamura was a figure of my birth. The Dainichirai Sama smiled and nodded three times, and I looked up at him in wonder. I thought that this was a great event, and immediately thought about this mystery. The Taizokai Dainichirai Sama is below the law, and the Kongokai Dainichirai Sama, which is above the law. They are bound in space, and a plus needs a minus. I compare it to the positive and negative charge of electricity. Put them together and light burns. It became Bryokai Mandala and the principle was born. I want all the people in the world to know this truth. We must not forget that Buddha always watches you, and I hope all people in the world release Busho, then the world will become peaceful and people can live in peace. Concluding Remark on Japan's Future I go to England every year because there is a branch of Kunamiyama Daikokuji there. In addition, in the spring of 2010, I performed the founding of a hallowed ground in Italy. In England and also in Italy, the harmony amongst families is very good, and all the family talk about anything together, unlike Japan. So it seems the communication between children and their parents is great there. How about in Japan? It seems to be really rare that a family talks together. There is no communication between children and parents, so that there is no balanced state between adults and children throughout Japan. There was a panel discussion on TV in Japan between an adult and some children. I was surprised at the sight which I saw when I watched it. Children spoke to the adults with little respect, and one boy said, The way that I look is making adults scared. In addition, adults told the children not to ride their bicycles and motorcycles so loudly, as it annoyed people. One boy replied, Airplanes are louder than us, but people let them fly. I was thinking that this is the chance for the adults to tell them off, but nobody said a word about it. This is why children never learn a thing. They should have told them clearly that making a loud noise when you ride a bicycle or a motorcycle was selfish, and it just annoyed people. But aeroplanes are helpful, even though they are loud. This is the big difference. The future of Japan belongs to the children, and we must enlighten them, otherwise they may end up living in the dark. If children don't have any respect for adults any longer, and crime increases, then Japan dies out. Naturally it's not possible that children will grow into adults who protect their country. The reality is that people who murder and can't see anything wrong in it are increasing, so we need to take measures to stop them, otherwise it is going to be too late. The first thing we can change is for adults to become examples to children. Human beings can thrive if only we join each other in mutual worship. It is important that we show children how to take pride in Japanese culture and cherish the Japanese values. If an adult and a child can understand each other, they will communicate better. It becomes an intelligible world where people can live comfortably. A heart that cares for its ancestry is necessary for it. In foreign countries, you can see adults taking children to worship in churches but there is no such culture in Japan. Adults should know that this is distorted. The adults don't set children a good example, and that's why children show them no respect. People constantly say that a nation is made up of people, territory, and its sovereignty. But the reality of life in Japan is that we don't have any love for our nation in politics, education, economy, society, or family. It may be said that if we embrace these things and we become a true nation, that people can live in peacefully every day. I am convinced that this is because less people are religious. Religious feeling is that we are a blessing of nature. The harmony between the people, respect for each other, and the thankfulness in everything that we have and do. Japan will be ruined if we do not live with this understanding. Young people work very hard at austere practices in Kunamiyama Daikokuji. The people who have suffered from not fitting in with society and considered suicide, who endured unhappy marriages, who suffered from diseases and struggled with alcoholism, all got well after working hard at following the Buddhist doctrine every day. I'm sure that it's very important for humans to have religious feelings, as I've seen those people in real life. As humans give birth to babies, society has given birth to terrorism, as both systems are the same. There is no way we could get rid of terrorism with military power. One who attacks will lose in the end. However, 
things always happen if we all know it. This is such a deplorable world. I know that terrorism will disappear from society if people realise that when terrorists resist society, it is the same as when children resist adults. If we all embrace Buddhism and improve our communication, the relationship between terror and society improves as it does between adults and children. The time has come that we must understand this and live for life. Forget what happened yesterday. Be pleased about today. Enjoy tomorrow. Koya San Shingonshu Konomiyama Daikokuji, Head Priest, M.A. Kamakami. Kami.